Okay, so can you see my chart right now? Yes, I can. All right, okay, so I'm all yours now. So you can tell me what questions. I will clear the chart over here, and this just an example ADSD. If there is any particular uh, pairs that you want to talk about, or you have questions about particular pairs, you can tell me, and then I will move to it, and I can answer your questions, hopefully. Oh, okay. Um, I think my biggest question um, is um, the liquidity sweep thingy, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm still struggling as to um, how to identify a liquidity sweep. Okay. And um, if there's no liquidity sweep, do we not enter the trade? So I think that issue of the liquidity sweep is what really bothers me. So especially okay. how to identify one. Is it always a double top or a double bottom? All right. Because that's how I try to make sense of it. That, you know, when, when, when you see mm. a double bottom or a double top, okay. that is a liquidity sweep. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm correct in mm. doing it like that. You know, okay. so yeah, that, that part was, I, I watched the video, you know, and um, I noticed that I struggle in terms of okay. the liquidity sweep. All right. And, I think I figured out what, what the imbalance is, the fair value gap. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, 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 that part I think I get. So if you can balance me on that one, um, it'll be great. Okay. Uh, I will start with the conversation I had uh, this afternoon with Chris. If you did uh, read that conversation on the full room. So on this pair, ADOSD, just by the way, it's related to your questions. And then also, Chris wanted to sell from this area over here, all right? So yeah. let me, okay. And then, yeah. So th this area for, for Chris, he wanted to sell from, from this area, okay? And mm -hmm. he sent and shared it with the group, which is good. It's not bad at all. But then I replied, I said, be careful because in this area over here on the top yeah. of this candle, yeah. there is no liquidity. So the liquidity is resting here. It may, hit the stop loss, sweep the liquidity over here, and then retrace down. So yeah. it will be like this. So the market was here, okay? So I mm -hmm. was afraid the market go here, sweep, oh, sorry. Sweep liquidity, and then retrace again, and then go down, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, it's just I'm not so much familiar with that. Let yeah. me do it again. Okay, double, and then, okay. So it was here in the afternoon. He expected the market to come here and then, okay, again, and retreats down like this, correct? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the expectation from Chris. And he said, it, and I said, there is liquidity resting in here and it may hit the stop loss. He said, yes, if that happens, which is correct as well too, he will, the market will sweep the liquidity. Uh, gosh, I need this one anyway. And then yeah. it goes down. If the liquidity swept over here, okay, yeah. he will place a sell stop. So this would be liquidity over here. And then he placed a sell stop and the market moved down. Okay. 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 And then I said, in another scenario, the market may go all the way down as that happened and sweep the liquidity resting over here. Okay. And there it yeah. is up. So scenario number two happened. It's not because I am smarter than him or anything. No, his scenario yeah. is good and my scenario is good. Okay. He was yeah. seeing the market to sell. And I was patient to the market and I took my chances for a buy market. So he was okay. right and I'm right. Okay. okay so like in, in this situation, if his scenario was good and working, I would tell you that's the scenario that worked and this. Okay. I'm just saying something oh. by the way. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that what happened. But let's go back a little bit to that liquidity. Correct. Because that's yeah. mainly your question. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you the story so you understand when we talk about liquidity and how to spot it and we see, is it liquidity being swept or is still resting in the, on the bull path, on the pull path, sure. okay? For sure, yes. for sure. So if we look at the market from this area over here, okay, just forget about what happened next, like yeah, over yeah. here, all right? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's just a pullback and the market was moving down and they retrace up. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Here, it's a clear or clean uh, pullback that has liquidity that not swept. Okay. Okay. So the market is moving like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and so on and so on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Here there is liquidity. Here there is liquidity. Here there is no there is liquidity. So I'm not going to sell from here. I'm not going to sell from here or sell from there. Why? Because I know there is liquidity resting over here that was not swept yet. Okay. Okay. So okay. what I need to see. Market moving, okay. So if the market moves down, I know there will be liquidity over here, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, okay, market up again, and then let's say down here, go up a little bit, sweep the liquidity, maybe go down again, sweep another liquidity, and then goes down here, and then pick up the order block and then go down. Do you see the difference? Yeah, I see, I see. You see the difference? Okay, yeah. so here, there is liquidity, all right? Yeah. But here, the price or the market has started to sweep the liquidity being created over there, all right? So yeah. I would call here is a liquidity. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah. over here. Okay, and then I will think all right, the mark for the liquidity and start to go down. I can place an order block. I will show you in the real trend. But then for sure, what happened? For sure. Market said no, I didn't finish yet. And then market sweep another liquidity over here. Correct? Yeah. And then it starts to go down. Here is a minor chalk. Okay? Yeah. Just a minor chalk because the market started to go up and then change the direction from uptrend to a downtrend. So this is a minor chalk. Yeah. All right. After yeah. the minor chalk happened, I will place a sell order clock in this area. If there is, so now I got the liquidity being swiped. I'm looking now for the fair value gap. Okay. Yeah. And unmitigated candle. After the chalk happened, okay, so first, the, so to make it in a series with you, first I look for liquidity to be swept, and then I will confirm a chain, a, a minor change of character, and then in this area over here, I need to see a fair value gap and unmitigated candle where I can place my sell order and hopefully to get successful trade the mortgage and go. Okay, okay. so the difference here, there is liquidity is resting, was not swept. Okay, here yeah. is liquidity was not swept, but the market did not continue its way down. It decided to sweep the liquidity over here, again over here, and then a check small or a minor chart, pick up the order. Now the, the order block is clean. Why? Because the liquidity previous, the, the, the liquidity above it being swept. Okay. 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 So do you understand how to identify the liquidity? It's not about the order block, but I'm trying to explain the whole yeah. situation yeah, of the yeah. liquidity. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So I'm getting an okay. idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. So if we come back here, all right. In this area over here, all right, this is a pullback. Correct. Just a pullback and then yeah, the market correct. trades yeah. down and then another pullback and the market retrace down. Correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. I see. Okay, so basically to sell, I want to find an inducement, which is here. Am I right? You follow me? Yeah, I'm okay. following it. Okay, so for this inducement, and now I have a very small fair value gap over here. Do you see? I can see it, yeah. Okay, so. The question is, am I going to place this candle as an order block for me or not? No. Why? Because I need to see a liquidity being swept. 
Oh. Right? So I don't have oh. a liquidity over here. You see, it's a pullback without B and has the liquidity that is not swept yet. You remember okay. that pattern? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I do, I do. Correct? It's exactly yeah. one, two, three. So the liquidity is resting over here. Yeah. Yes, you can take it, but the risk is it might sweep the liquidity over here. So your stop loss will be taken and then you can, you should be ready with another sell stop over here, 50% as for example. And after the liquidity being swept, the market will retrace down, trigger your sell stop and start yeah. moving down on your desired uh, direction. direction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can, by taking the chance or the risk, you, you may lose only one trade, but in return, you can lose, may, you can win maybe one to 10, one to five. It depends on your take profit. So you lose yeah. one, four, maybe six, seven, eight. That's what I don't know how you set up your uh, take profit or it depends on the situation that you have. But the yeah. most important, we talk about the liquidity over here, right? Yeah. So is it clear enough what I'm telling you? Or what yeah, I'm explaining it's, to you? Yeah, it's clear enough. I think maybe um, looking at two or three more examples as explaining other yeah, concepts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. yeah but so, so far, so far um, I'm getting it. Okay. Because okay. another mm -hmm. thing that sometimes um, I'm not sure that which should I use for my trade setup, the fair value gap or the order block, you know, at times I get a bit confused that, um, what is my, what do you call it? Point of interest? Is it the fair value gap mm -hmm. or is it the order block? Okay. You know, yeah. When they're right uh, next to each other like that, I struggle as to, I, uh, I tell you my opinion about it. Yeah. It's up to the market. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's, that's my opinion. Many people yeah. would disagree with me. Many people would agree with me. Today, yeah. the market has left me behind. Sure. I didn't trade the value gap. Uh, this, on AUDSD, I just shared with the group today. Okay. Yeah. So I have been wait, waiting for this trade since maybe 10 or 11 in the afternoon. It just happened two hours ago. Can you, can you imagine? I have been waiting all these hours, right? And then yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will move to M1 and I will show you what happened. But that's why I'm saying it's up to the market. Like my setup was not wrong, but the market okay. did not touch yeah. my, my OB. And okay. then sometimes I if I choose the fair value gap, it may hit my, hit my stop loss and then take the, the OB itself or the, or the candle. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. you, can, you can merge between the fair value gap and the candle. If you know what I mean, I will show you when we move to M1. Time sure, frame, I will sure. show you what I mean. And by then, yes, your stop loss will be a little bit bigger and your uh, risk reward ratio may be less or your ratio, not ratio, your, your take profit target may be less instead of aiming, let's say maybe one to 20 or one to 15, it could be one to seven or one to eight. Of course, yeah. because of the stop loss. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's move to M1. And again, we're going to talk about the liquidity and that confusion between the fair value gap or the, the order plot order itself, plot. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's remove over here. So first we need to highlight this candle and right, because this is our H1 point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I was waiting for the liquidity over here to be swept. For sure. Correct. And then yeah. the price closed higher. You see the black candle? Yeah, the price yeah. closed higher. Then yeah. I moved to M1 time frame. That was here. Yeah. Okay. So our yeah. checklist setup, can you remind me? What should we do when we move to M1 time frame after we get the OB alert? Okay, when we move down to the M1 time frame, um, we first wait for um, we will identify an, an order block on the one hour time frame, okay. and then and then we, we mark we mark our swing high and swing low, you mm -hmm. know, and then wait for a change of character. Perfect. Then... So just just take me one by one, okay? So now okay. we want 
after we move to a lower time frame, we want to see or identify uh, our change of character, correct? For sure, for sure. Okay, so is it good change of character for you? That yeah, it is. You? Yeah, it does. It definitely does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. this is our, I, okay. Yeah. Change of character. You good with yeah, this yeah. change of character. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does it satisfy you as a liquidity sw being swept over here? Here? Yeah, it does. It does? Okay. It does, Perfect. Yeah. So this is liquidity. You could identify it. Okay. Yeah. So we have liquidity being swept. So we have a change of character. So what else should we see? Market is here. Okay. Um, I think we would need to identify our either effect, effect value gap or our order block, and then we can enter, okay. enter the trade. So we highlight our fair value gap, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So basically the market is over here, correct? I will move a little bit and here is our fair value gap, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after the fair value gap, can we place our pending buy? I think we can, yeah. Where? Which, which candle would you choose to be a pending buy? Uh, I think that um, the candle following that, um, is it a pin bar or whatever? Can I try drawing on the screen? Okay, here. Yeah. Um, let me see. Can you see now? Yeah, I think, I, I think I would have put my trade somewhere here. After it came back here, mm -hmm. um, I, I put my pending order right on the, on the. That candle. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as it touches here, it will trigger my trade. After mm -hmm. I did this, it broke the structure. I've, I've okay. identified the fair value gap. Yeah. I, I would place the pending order here and then okay. wait for it to come here. And then this would be my, my stop. This would be my entry and. Probably okay. I'd, I'd use this as my target. Okay, perfect. All right. But if, are you aware that you have chosen the fair value gap to trade? Now we are trading the fair value gap, right? Because yeah, look, I, I'm trying to let you say I, I everything because this, this is for you, right? For your... For sure, for sure. Yes, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So I would place my pending buy and it, over here and the the stop loss. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries, no worries. Stop loss to be over here. Oh yeah, the order block. Yes. Okay. And the stop loss below the liquidity sweeper candle. Okay. Oh, because we're only safe of being beneath the liquidity sweep. What's yeah. that? I mean, the, the stop loss is always better when it's beneath the liquidity. liquidity. Yes, candle. the candle that sweep the liquidity. Correct. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Okay. So in this scenario, when I placed my pending order over here, it did not yeah. touch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You remember when I told you it's up to the market? Yeah, how, yeah. How is it Touch yeah. the fair value gap and leave us behind. And sometimes just fill in the fair value gap, touch our pending order, and retrace on our desired direction. Correct? So, in this scenario today, it did not touch the pending order. So, if someone or I or you or anyone decided to trade the fair value gap, then it was successful trade. For me, I did not enter the tra the, this trade. The, the, my oh. pending order was not triggered because my pending order is below the fair value gap down here, the blue box I down see. here. Okay. I see. So I, I was see. out of the market. Okay. I see. I see. All right. So, but Shoot. that's not the whole situation. That's not the whole situation. So right now, you know how to identify the chalk, you know how to identify, I will give you more example, examples yeah. about the, 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 the liquidity sweep. Okay. But yeah. as for this example, we have the chalk. We have liquidity sweeper. We have got a fair value gap. 
over here. Correct. Yeah. And then I placed my M1 by entry over here. Okay. Yeah. And then the market left me and did not touch. I don't want to open the, 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 the screen right now because I want to tell you something. For sure. That yet I still can place a new pending order over here in this candle that you did mark earlier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see what happened in the market and then we'll see. So a, ch a change of character happened. The fair value gap somehow been filled in and then the market go up. So that's a break of structure. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. A okay. Boss. Okay. And this here become my endorsement. Okay. Yeah. And then the market keep pushing up again. Yeah. I'm pushing up. All right. In some scenarios, I can play, I can place another pending order over here. Or more. And yet I will keep my extreme order. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Let's see what happened. The market didn't look. So nothing. The market just keep moving up. We are not going to talk about, about any entry and continuation right now, but here the market then, then moved up and moving up based on the, the, uh, the trend. Okay. Yeah. So none of my trades or none of my pending order has been touched today. But yet the market is moving very beautifully upward. So yeah. did you do something wrong? No. Did I do anything wrong? No. I did follow the checklist setup. Everything seemed perfect. It's sure. just the market rules. <laughs> sure. Just the market rules. Market decided yeah. just to move forward and just left you behind and just one trade. So in every single trade that you are going to take or you are going to take in, in the future, that's the same setup that you have to follow, right? Yeah. And you cannot and I see that. Yeah, I see that. Yes. All right. I see that so so clearly. Yep. So, so now, mm -hmm. my question would be, mm -hmm. in terms of the fair value gap and okay the the order block, okay, which one has the highest probability? Uh this is I, I cannot tell for sure. Is because I, I think Tryon, our member, he, I call him the master of fair value gap. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yes. He's always shared his, uh, based on the fair value gap. So, and we share our interest based on the order block, the, 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 the liquidity being swept and then we follow our checkup, uh, a checklist set up, then we follow the, the change of character and, and we mark our fair value gap and then we mark our pending order, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know for sure, like which one is high probability. If okay, you are focusing see. on trading the fair value gap, then you will get your chances. If you are uh, focusing on trading the, the order block, you get your chances. Okay. And yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. One more, one more thing. We come back a little bit to M1. Sometimes when the fair value gap is not that big, like in our situation over here, let me delete this one. Okay. You could extend. So the fair value gap was here. So you could extend your, your order block pending order starts with the beginning of the fair value gap and your stop loss is still below the liquidity sweeper candle. Do you understand what I mean? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Okay. So before I mark the fair value gap over here, yeah. and then place my order. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
in some scenarios, if the fair value gap, this area for the fair value gap, if you find yeah. it yeah. small enough, yeah. okay, you can merge it. So you can consider your pending order starting from Oh, I see. You avoid see. the fair value gap. Okay. Oh, oh so, I see. You understand what I mean? I think this thing is even answering another question I had. Cause okay, sometimes when there are less to be shared, um, it will look like this, you know. And since I'm still learning what an order block is, it wouldn't really look like an order block. But now I understand that sometimes if the pips are small, um, you can just absorb the the fair value gap into into the order block into the order block right like you kind of merge yeah. the fair value gap and order for block sure, together for sure for sure this right. adding it's adding so much clarity now yes but look at the difference here okay ah, not this one because we enlarge our pin our pending order and the stop loss okay let's consider to the top is okay yeah your risk, your reward for so far is 11 or all, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. But if it is just below where I did place it, your reward is still twice as much. Twice as much. <laughs> okay, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can, you can, if you are happy to merge the fair value gap with your pending order, it's, it's okay. I'm just telling you, I'm showing you the differences between this yes, and that. Yes, but it's yes, not a understand. call to be greedy. I'm not trying to make you greedy or something. You just, understand. I'm giving you, showing you everything, the whole full picture of the whole for situation. Sure. For sure, for sure. Right? I understand. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the, that's the situation. So if I merge my pending order with the fair value gap, I could get one to 10 and I'm okay with that. Instead of getting nothing, if I'm aiming a higher ratio reward, uh, yeah, I would get 20% and just tighten my stop loss and my entry. That will give me higher risk reward ratio. Yeah. Right. Dude, this is awesome. Okay. So let's go back a little bit and talk more about liquidity. Correct? Yes, 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 please. Okay. So let's don't play. Okay. Will be and have some books. Okay. This is a little bit. I want to one. Maybe give us something. Okay. Yeah, that's good over here. Let's start. Let's consider this as an uptrend. Yeah. Okay. Right? We we yeah. let's start. Yeah. Let's start from here. Okay, and we consider this an uptrend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here is a pullback, this area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a pullback, but yeah. still have, it has a resting liquidity over here. Yeah. Okay. So what happened? The market retraced up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it didn't, it didn't leave this area yet. All right. Just yeah. break that structure with just one pip with the wick of this bearish candle and then go down again. Yeah. Sweep that liquidity over yeah. here. Now we can say that liquidity being swept. Okay. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. And then go down and then pull back and then down again and up. Okay. So let's stop yeah. here. The liquidity over here being swept, okay? And mm -hmm. then move up. If I were to place a pending order just in case the market moved, like this, 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 that's not good over here. Yeah. Why? Because the liquidity will not swept yet. So I cannot yeah. place a pending order at any pullback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what happened? The market reached. So the liquidity here being swiped. And then the market started to retrace 
to retrace uh, for the game. All right. Yeah. Here. In this area. I can place a pending order directly. I can do that. Okay. okay. I see. Why? Yeah. Because I have liquidity here being swept. All right. Yeah. I'm being swept again over here. And over here, and then the market started to have a small or a minor change of structure, change of character. Yeah, and I use this area, and I can place a pin buy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then yeah. the market move up again. I pull back. Liquidity will not swept in here. Right, it just yeah. pull back. Yeah. The market move up over here. Okay, I pull yeah. back. Market move up. I pull back. Market move up. I pull back. Okay, here is very interesting. When the market pull back over here, did not bring the last high. Correct. Yes. All right. So I will ignore these. So I will consider this is my leg. From here to here, not. Okay, but I see. You you understand what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, I so see. My I see, leg yeah. will not be from here to here. No, I will extend my leg to be from the top to the bottom over here until the high is broken. So that's my pullback. So it will yeah. be this, 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 and this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now. We move up again from here and then I have a pullback. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then retrace up again and then I pull back again. Okay. In the liquidity. You see that little liquidity? Yes. I can see. Yeah. Pull back. Retracement and then continue down, take the liquidity and then a break of structure. But, uh, yeah. So I see, I see liquidity being swept over here. I have a fair value gap. I have a chance to place a pending order. Do you remember when I told you that we can merge between the fair value gap? And the pending order, the order yeah, yeah. because it's very small over here, if you can yeah. see. And then our yeah. stop loss is below the, the liquidity the sweep candle. Yeah. Correct? All right. Yeah. So here, liquidity being swept, the high being broken, I pull back. Here become a good pending buy. Yeah. All right. And then yeah. move up again and so on and so on and so on. So not every pullback is a liquidity. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Is that clear enough? If it is not clear, tell me and I will repeat again. It looked clear. It looks clear enough. And okay. when, when they're explaining this, you know, I'm reminded of one or two scenarios whereby um, my Forgive me, I just have a bit of a flu, you know, so I sound funny. No problem. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so the the spread, you know, um, okay. at times you, you find that you, you don't get triggered in because of the spread. Um, oh. Yeah, so as I'm speaking like this, merging the, the order block and fair value gap because of the pips are small, mm -hmm. I'm now remembering some scenarios whereby the spread didn't allow me to be to be triggered, even though it touches exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, how can one manage that? Uh, there is no way to manage it. Uh, otherwise, you will just trade the the pairs that has very low spread, because when oh. the spread is high, it is it is what it is. Okay. Okay. Also, right. you, you you don't have to change your entry point to to compensate for the spread is not a good idea. Ne? 
No, to to like to be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend recommend you to to trade with the high spread pairs. For sure, for sure. Because especially if you are going to trade from a lower time frame, like M1, it, it will be a killing to you. It, every time it will be will be stopped out by spread, and then the market moves. So it will yeah. be like it will frustrating. If I can yeah. Tell. Yeah, yeah. So like the, the US dollar pairs are very good, ADUSD, EURUSD, Capitan USD. Most of the people and myself, we are focusing on that because of the spread, on these pairs because of the spread. But yeah, sometimes I, I, I trade some other pairs when I see a good opportunity, but our main focus on the low spread pairs. Yeah, okay. Makes okay. sense. Makes yes. sense. Okay. But for, for, for practicing, for training, if you have a demo account and maybe that day you did not have uh, a Euro USD or, or US dollar pairs and you want to practice and you, get, and you get order block from other pairs, you still can practice it. But you understand if the market stopped you out and didn't continue, again, it's not on you. It is just the spread. So you have to understand why I'm out of that market. Why? Maybe it's just the spread. Maybe the market decided to sweep some more liquidity and then go up. And here it comes your being uh, a decisive. Okay, will I have a, a buy stop or sell stop, or I will just stop trading this pair and see what will happen? You know, all sure. situations happen. Like many times I've been stopped out and such a thing, but you have to be very fast the way you think. Will I place another buy stop? Stop or will be out or what happened in the market, especially if you are trading in one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see, I see. And if M1 is very fast for you, maybe you can start with the M5, M15, like a, a time frame that gives you time to think and analyze, uh, analyze the, the market and the situation. I think I like the M1. <laughs> okay, yeah, but, I started, yeah. Uh, I didn't trade M1 for quite some time, but I started to like M1 right now, <laughs> so I'm yeah. practicing on it, but I'm yeah. doing good so far. Yeah, because I don't think my psychology um, is at the place whereby I can have a trade running for a long time. Mm. Yeah, like, um, I think I still need, need to, to work on that one. Okay. So, but yeah, but the shorter it takes for, for the trade. To, mm. to be carried out the better, you know. So yes. I haven't mastered the patience of waiting and letting the trade play out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's of my, yeah. Look, I wanna I wanna discuss with you this situation over here, okay? For sure, so, for sure. Because this is a situation where or when we can face a stop loss. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. and here here, as we said, the market is moving downward. Because basically we, we, we agreed this is an uptrend, okay? So yeah. the market is resting or retracing over here. And then we wait for the liquidity to be swept, correct? After yeah. liquidity being swept, the market started to go up. But I'm not going to place any order here because I need to wait for a minor change of character. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you always remember yeah. that. Yeah. So the minor change of character happened here, not here. Like here, yeah. I, cannot, I cannot place anything. Okay, yeah, so yeah. here our minor. Okay, so I'm supposed to call it minor chalk. Okay, here is minor chalk. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, and here another liquidity being swept. Seems perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and I have a fair value gap. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry, have a fair value gap over here. Okay, so I can place my pending buy from here. And then the stop loss is over here. Or I merge it with the fair value gap. Okay, in either way, it hit the stop loss. And then look what happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> right? So, yeah. I'm saying, and then even though up loss start to go up and go up way far. Okay, like yeah. by then maybe it is um uh, this is long, maybe I don't know. If it was triggered, we could make 
one to eight, one to nine. One so to I think eight, yeah. your, your other block would or would already be moved to the break even and secured. Right. Yeah. But this is a situation where we can hit stop loss, but it doesn't mean I need I, I did something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the market rules. I call it yeah. the market rules, you know, like <laughs> I don't like to give names for things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah, it was the same setup, the same, uh, steps that I did follow with the liquidity being swept, the minor change of character, a fair value gap, everything was clear to place a pending buy, but yet it hit stop loss. And after it hit my stop loss, what happened? Go up. So if you want to be, uh, like decisive, as I said, or be very fast to thinking. So what happened after sweeping this liquidity over here, here, there is another minor chop. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm really stubborn, I will place a bending buy. Okay. It's already bending buy over here and then it touch and go. But in this situation, I don't have a fair value gap. I just have liquidity here. Things what? All right. Yeah. Liquidity. Okay. But I don't have a fair value gap. So it is a risky entry. It does not fulfill all the checklist setup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But yet it's working. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see. So it, you can, you can evaluate the situation. You see, sometimes you can let go of one. Now we don't see a fair value gap. Will I take it? I'm not going to take it. How many, how many trade did I lose today? Do I have the leverage or privilege to lose one more in case something went wrong or not? You see, you have to think about all these things and then yeah. you can decide, okay, I will break the rules this time or no, I will commit to my rules. I will wait. So this entry is not mine. Even and make one to 10, one to 15 or art. No, it doesn't matter. I have to commit to my checklist setup. And in this entry, it did not fulfill my checklist setup. So I didn't take it. So I did the right thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It can be much clearer. It can be much, much clearer. And so now what happens when you can see a fair value gap, mm -hmm. but there's no order block? I just avoid it. Okay. What, what, what I'm going to do <laughs> because okay. basically the market was to fa to fill in that fair value gaps. Here we have a fair value gap and here we have a fair value gap and here we have a fair value gap. Right. Okay. Yeah. We have three fair value gaps. So you cannot place a pending buy, a pending buy, a pending buy. Right? Yeah. yeah. Do that. Otherwise, if you are, we can have, we can ask Mr. Tryon to join us one day and he explained how he's the master of fair value gap. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can contact him and I'm sure he will not hesitate to help, to help you in that. It'll be great. Or, or one of these days. Yeah. It'll yes. be great. Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I think I'm getting an idea of, mm -hmm. of how, yeah, of how to trade this. And, um, so when, when the alerts are sent, right. Um, we get multiple of them during the day. Mm -hmm. um, how do I decide which ones I'm going to observe and follow closely and which ones um, maybe not to take? Um, you see, that, that, that part of I have to decide on which one to look mm -hmm. at. Um, I think it's, it's another area I'm struggling with, you know. Uh, okay, so yeah. if that pair has, as I said, high spread, maybe you want to avoid it. Okay, okay. Okay, this is okay. number one. Number, number two, one, yeah. yeah, maybe number two, you feel more comfortable in trading the euro or the, the euro pairs, the US dollar pairs. Okay, number three, maybe there is news during the time you receive that specific uh, order block from a specific pair, let's say I use dollar news and you got your USD. I'm sure you don't want to trade that unless you want to take the risk. It may give you a huge reward and you may lose. So yeah, it's all yeah. about your decision. 
So, uh, like, uh, my work is to give all the members, all the available uh, OBs in the market in the 28 pairs, right? But yeah. I cannot tell you which one to trade and which one not to trade because the <laughs> pair that he yeah. preferred to trade, right? Someone sure. likes only gold, someone else like your USD. I don't know how it, about you, right? So, yeah. Yes. Okay, I see. Yeah, so you have to say, may maybe you have traded enough today. So you say, okay, like I have got my five trades today and I have got maybe let's say 1%, 2% and that's my goal for today. So, okay, thank you. I'm not going to trade again today. I will start again tomorrow. Or you maybe may Allah forbid that you have lost 1% or less or more. And then no, no, you have to control yourself and say, no matter what, I have to stop. I have to clear my mind and I will start again fresh tomorrow yeah yeah yes so like yeah. not every single ob is good for you because we are we, we have big community right so for sure <laughs> maybe for you sure. can work with someone else but you cannot just trade uh every single trade you will not be able to focus yeah definitely yes. definitely okay. definitely yes so yeah no i think right. yeah i think i'm balanced okay that's very good that's very good yeah, let's see how, how this week turns out. Yeah, you, you will have this um, Zoom call is recorded and I will send it to you. Or if you record it on your computer, then you will have it. And yeah, I hope I did clear enough what is the uh, uh, liquidity and how to choose the pin, the, uh, the entry and so analyze the, the, the trend yeah. so far. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so far, um, I'm happy. You okay, know, that's I good. think, I think, um, in about a week or two, um, I'll text you and let you know how my progress is doing. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I would love mm -hmm. to know that. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping for the best. Um, I didn't record. Um, could you please send me the the link? Um, of course. Mind? Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, I'll. I will meet you. Okay. Okay. And then. yes, please follow up with me and let me know, like, how did you absorb this uh, conversation with me and how we can identify the, especially the liquidity and your, uh, your interest, either on buy or sell. Okay. Okay. No, or I how... really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. My so pleasure. Much. All okay, right. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you, Mo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.